if you had the power to delete one thing from this world, as if it never existed or ceased to exist, what would it be? I am a young person, who forget things too much. One of my greatest fear is dying alone, the other is that my tendency of forgetting things will develop into dementia, and I won't be able to remember my precious memories. Who are we without our memories? We are all forgetful sometimes, don't worry dear, memory stays good if you stay alert. I work puzzles, read things, look up things. Some people just naturally have better memory than others. My five-year-old grandson can name all the presidents and tell you something about them. My mother could say her ABCs backwards, count backwards from 100. We all have talents, discoverers. My gran has dementia and is now in a home, but for six years the hardest part wasn't seeing her fall apart, it kills you quicker as well as all the other side effects. No no. The hardest part is on those that have to look after the one with dementia. It tore my parents apart. More bickering and fighting and stress and frustration in their 60s. We retired, for this shit, dot. I genuinely started to worry they'd get a divorce. Now she's gone and I can see the joy and light back with them again, but it may have had irreversible repercussions. One could argue it highlighted their issues that were always there but still. And nobody else offers to help because they say they care but they don't. Everyone just wants peace and quiet and an easy life. Resentment kicked in like a hand grenade across the whole family. Yep. My grandma had it and my mom, who had just retired, took care of her for three years before she couldn't do it anymore and my grandma moved to a nursing home. My aunt and uncle did pretty much fuck all, maybe called once a month maybe. None of the heavy lifting, literally or figuratively. Fast forward three years, I start to notice my mom mixing up her words and writing herself notes that look like nonsense after she'd been sharp as a tack for 65 years. I take care of her, living with her. Unpaid, 24 slash 7, and my two sisters who live in the same city just can't bother to lift a finger, unless it's to criticize her care or comb through my mom's bank records looking for where I'm stealing from her, obviously I wasn't. That destroyed our relationship when we'd previously all been super close. We'd all three at one point even moved out of our mom's house into another house together. I mean we were close. But now it's hard for me to not feel massively resentful and still furious for how unnecessarily hard they made that whole experience for me. So yeah. The family destruction is a casualty itself that a lot of times isn't talked about. I work pest control, and no joke this is the main thing that keeps me working pest control. My favorite feeling in the world is killing these little pests. There is honestly no better feeling in the whole world than seeing the look on someone's face a week later when I go to their house and see how everything's going. You can see it immediately when you look at them, they look healthier and more alive, because they haven't been having the life drained from them by a little parasite that keeps them from sleeping and causes them constant paranoia. It is the one thing that makes the long days, and long nights all worth it. Last spring, I started waking up with red spots all over my body. Every day that I woke up, there would be more. I started to panic research what the hell could be biting me, and I was certain it was bed bugs. I was so itchy that I couldn't do anything but sit and stare at the floor because it took everything not to scratch myself. I put bed bug dust under my bed, and I took the socket plates off the walls and put more bed bug dust in that too. I stripped my mattress, treated it with bed bug foam mattress spray three times, put a mattress protector specifically for bed bugs washed all of my sheets three times, and then I struggled to sleep, which I couldn't from the constant, itching paranoia. The next morning, I woke up with more bites. I had more than 100 red marks on my abdomen, chest, collarbones, and inside of my arms and thighs. I decided it was finally time to go to the doctor to get some sort of relief. Hum. These aren't bad bug bites, I stopped and looked at him like he had grown a second head. Are you kidding me? He confirmed that they weren't, and that he believed that I had a skin condition known as pityriasis rosacea. In my case, he thought that it was from stress. I'm a pre-med college student, and I was in the middle of the midterms. I had just gotten hired at a new job, my car was totaled from a hailstorm, and every night I went to bed I was more and more stressed because I thought bed bugs were ravaging me as I slept. As it turns out, the red marks were only spreading because I was so stressed about the bed bugs. As soon as he diagnosed me, the red marks stopped spreading. Eventually, 
I researched the condition to the point where I found that going to a tanning salon would help the marks go away faster. Point of the story bed bugs suck and the human brain is insanely powerful. Man I went through this too, I had them in my shitty apartment in NY luckily I only had to live with them for a month before moving and all of my belongings were put in storage for over 8 months which successfully eradicated them. Last month I was staying at an Airbnb I sat on the couch, got bit and I immediately knew what it was, I nearly had a mental breakdown. It may seem like a bad thing but I am extremely allergic to them, I'm talking orange sized welts in my body. This means if I get bit, I know immediately it is bed bugs. Luckily I was able to get photos of the welts and a good photo of one of those little little fuckers. Despite the photo evidence, Airbnb were still an absolute garbage company to deal with and were trying to give me only a partial refund, but after a week of being told they were looking into the issue they finally refunded the full amount. Lost my dad a couple years back. You will be okay for a while. And then you won't be. And that is okay. Except those times where you're not okay. That's part of grief, and it may never go away. My partner still has dreams about her mother basically every day. It's hard, but it will inevitably happen to everyone around you at some point. Best we can do is love those we love while we can. 3. It does get easier over time, but it never goes away fully. Hope you have a good support network, my friend. And if you don't, please talk to your GP about grief counseling. Most places offer free grief counseling after a family member's death if it's signed off by a GP, or they can at least link you to some community resources. Depression. I've been majorly affected by it and seen what it can do to others who lose their battle. No one should have to feel that alone and shitty. Edit, the amount of people who relate to this. Thank you to everyone who has commented, shared their story or offered support, you are all amazing. Anxiety is a nightmare. Totally this, I thought the lowest point of my life was the depression era only to come out of it and swing all the way to the other end and find panic attacks and no sleep. For someone who has courted suicidal thoughts on every depressing day for years it was the first time I would have actually done it and not in a good way. When you're losing your own sanity and watching it all go down it's a surreal feeling and you would do anything to stop it, before you can't hold yourself together to do even that. When you're losing your own sanity and watching it go down. I spent two years getting consumed by my mental health. Fully conscious of every situation I was going through. Felt like one of those guys on the Titanic knowing it's going down, but nothing to do. Like you I split my life into pre-depression, depression, life after depression. Only to realize I didn't have life errors. Depressed me and fully functioning me are the same person at the same time. I owe my life to clonidine. A blood pressure medication used off-label for anxiety and for people doing drug withdrawals. Safe for long-term dosages, and mainly just decreases your body's flight or fight response equivalent to your anxiety. The day God created mosquitoes. When God was enjoying a wonderful day he colored the ocean, the sea and the spray. He peppered the planet with forests of trees with sweet subtle scents on a warm summer's breeze. He crafted the kitten and when he was done perfected the pup and the penguin for fun. He playfully reached in the depths of his mind and found all the finest of animal kind. A toast, he exclaimed, to the things that I've made. The creatures I've crafted, the plans that I've laid. And so with fulfillment, content to his core, he knocked back a whiskey, and poured himself more. The following morning he awoke in a daze. He woke with a head full of headache and haze. He woke with a groan and a moan of distress. He woke and he rose, and his place was a mess. The whiskey was empty. The cupboards were bare. He drank till the dawn of the morn in his chair. And when all his liquors had passed by his lip he'd conjured a spirit for spirits to sip. Good heavens, he whispered, oh boy, what a night at least nothing happened. He said with delight. He walked to his workshop. He went for his key. He stared with dismay, and he said oh my me. He's organized boxes of animal parts the toes and the noses, the lungs and the hearts he'd spilled them, he'd mixed them and filled them and split. He'd opened the box that said horrible shit. Oh Jesus, said Jesus, from somewhere behind. You've got to stop drinking each time you've designed. But God heard the buzzing. He whispered with doubt. I'm sure that it's nothing to worry about. Exactly. It's like Steve Hofstetter said. Most people who don't want kids realize that they don't have the time, 
or the money, or the love it takes to raise a child. Then you have so many ignorant fucks that are responsible for overpopulation saying that goes there and boom. Baby. I'm probably not going to have kids because I don't really have the patience for them. And that's okay. But if people would stop and think before putting things where they honestly shouldn't go, this world would be a lot better to live in. Edit. Thanks for the gold. Whoever sent that. You're awesome. Brain tumors. If had one and we didn't find out until I were like 11 or 12 and having a brain tumor is like straight up worse than hell. It slowly ate my brain to become bigger and the way we saw something was wrong was during a less ion in school when I felt super bad for what I know was no reason. I quickly raised from my chair, ran to the door, opened the door, fell and vomited on the ground and the teachers called my dad. He picked me up. It didn't get better when I took medicine and stuff so I forced him to take me to the hospital and they gave me medicine that still didn't work so we drove to the hospital again and they did a body x-ray to know what was wrong and they didn't find anything but it kept getting worse so my dad called again and then we did full body x-ray and they found something weird in the head so I did a head x-ray and they saw that there was something wrong at the brain and they did a brain x-ray and found a 6.5 centimeter long brain tumor, large to be a brain tumor. And then they got kinda stressed and contacted a surgeon right away and took to an emergency operation room and operated me. I have two pictures on my retina of when I were there. I still have it hard but it's getting better and better for every day. Absolutely. I've often wondered how much better the world would be without rape. I'm a victim and it has affected every single thing about my life, as much as I have tried to not let it. Even my amazing husband is affected by my rape. Good, decent men who would never rape, don't think for a minute that rape doesn't affect you. BC when women are being raped, and then you marry a victim, it will affect you too. I have PTSD where sometimes when my husband touches me, I cringe away. I actually hate to be even casually touched now. Rape of women affects good men's futures too, and we all should be extremely pissed off that women have been traumatized in this way. And also for the men who have been raped. This problem does not get enough spotlight. But as a female survivor, I understand the trauma that you have been through. It's so traumatizing but it's maybe even more stigmatized for Malay survivors. I'm so sorry for all. Every single one of us should be extremely angry at rape. Thanks for thinking about us. I'm a man, also a victim of this kind of thing, and it messed up my brain for some years. Especially since it was a dude doing oral on me, so I got a moment of asking myself if it was really a rape. I had to go through all of this alone, nobody supported me or just was nice with me. More than 10 years after I finally made a complaint, the thing where I'll get called if there's another victim. And am it was hard. Now these things are part of my past, happily. But yeah I had a hard time accepting it's a rape because I felt it wasn't violent or horrible enough. I wish you to be able to go over it and to be happy. Really. Wish you the best. Excuse me but I think you are not giving yourself enough room in the conversation. You are talking about your experience here. You are telling us you were harmed. You are telling us that you were ignored and not taken seriously. I would call that very really harmful. Although ignored and minimized, that is the kind of hurt that lasts. I would like to encourage you to take yourself and this experience, and all the feelings you feel surrounding it, seriously. You deserve to be taken seriously and if you ask me to start with no longer listening or repeating those minimizing, blaming yourself statements. Your pain is real, I believe you. I would specifically delete all the evolutionary baggage in humans that actively hinders and limits modern society. Now that may be rather vague but just imagine the world without rape, overwhelming greed, hoarding of resources, tribalism, prejudice, runaway pride and all the things that were once useful for the survival of the species but now drag us down. All the problems in the world are very solvable, at least for now, but we are just problematic bipedal primates with too much baggage. Psychopaths and sociopaths. They're the root of all our societal ills. Cancer? Other medical issues? Capitalism keeps it out if reached for people. War? Started by old sociopaths who want defense contracts filled. Colonization and slavery? How sociopathic do you have to be to be okay with enslaving another human being? Climate change? See capitalism again. Wealth inequalities. Bad police. List goes on and on and it can be traced to the disorders that runs counter to the human instinct of cooperation. 
we evolved to cooperate and according to one anthropological theory, the sociopaths have only flourished when we started living in cities too big for them to be noticed and excised in time. Ego, in both the prideful and conscious sense. If you think about it, it's the source of a lot of needless suffering. In a society with sufficient resources, ego prevents their fair distribution. It's led to numerous wars and deaths, also that one man or another could lead a fraction of a rock for a fraction of a lifetime. It's the source of the many mental health issues and insecurities. To name a few. Sure an ego makes us, well, us. But we don't know what it would be like without a self to hate or a nation to conquer. I wonder if it's at all possible that we wouldn't be a little happier without it. Welcome to an alternate universe where Stalin never existed. The October Revolution still happened. It's likely that the soviet Polish war in the early 20s went a bit differently, but we'll let it slide. 1924 rolls around, and a man named Vladimir Ilyich Ulyanov, known to the world as Lenin, dies. In the internal political struggle that follows the victories? Trotsky. Instead of the right opposition under Zinoviev uniting with the centrist Stalin, the left takes charge, and Trotsky, the father of the Red Army, leads the young Soviet Union to a great future of perpetual revolution. So now, instead of a cautious, reactionary Stalin, we have a bold, active Trotsky. Someone who doesn't espouse ideas of building socialism on one single country, but is instead focused on bringing the revolution to the entire world. The Soviet Red Army marches east to help the Chinese Red Army defeat the nationalists. Manchuria is taken by the Soviets from the Japanese, along with the rest of Sakhalin. With Chinese and Soviet forces combined, the ancient empire of the rising sun is colored red. And on the march goes, this time, to the west. Poland is fighting once again, but it is no match to the combined strength of the Soviet-Chinese Comintern. Finland follows, and at that point, the capitalist democracies of Europe have no choice but to fight, and fight they do. British Democrats and French liberals ally with German Nazis and Italian fascists to combat the communist threat. A war engulfs Europe, bigger than the Great War. The Red Scare in America rises and rises, and the government can no longer stave off public unrest by deporting anarchists. In an effort to stop communism once and for all, martial law is imposed, and forces are sent to Europe once more. But it's not just to overthrow, it's over here too. American workers chant the slogans of communism, and the economy collapses. Well, one could go on. Trust me, out of all the shit that was at the top of the commie party in the 20s, Stalin was the most stable piece of shit. One that didn't risk war unless all other options were exhausted. Sure, perhaps Bukharin or Zinoviev would have been less brutal. But they would never give USSR the stability to prevent war, be it internal or external. I think I'll provide a comedic answer, the fucking Chrysler Sebring. It is unreliable, overpriced, underpowered, poorly designed, and one of the fugliest cars next to the Gremlin. It's the asshole of cars. I would rather ride a scooter forever than drive one of those shit boxes. And so many assholes that own one, especially convertible models, think it's the hottest thing since the Mustang and it's not. Watching someone drive one is like watching a unicorn turn inside out, it's fucking horrifying so you can't look away but it's also so unique in its shittiness you want to keep looking. To anyone who owns one, fucking sell it. Crash it. Burn it. A PT Cruiser is literally a better choice than a Sebring. Just accept it. Okay, I know most of these answers relate to clearly bad things. But my answer comes mostly from curiosity. Both capitalism and religion are so pervasive in the world that it's difficult to imagine a world without them. I'm not an economist or a philosopher, but I'm pretty sure even so-called socialist counties in Europe are pretty capitalistic. Even if you look at the Soviet Union, not religious not capitalist, it was profoundly shaped by the rest of the world i.e. capitalism and religion. So the question is this, not would the USSR have succeeded, but rather what would the world even look like without religion and capitalism? I have trouble imagining it. Sleep paralysis. Just woke up from a nap an hour or so ago and couldn't move, I think. It's weird honestly. I think I'm awake but because I can't do anything I hallucinate some movements to make me feel like I'm making progress to getting out of it. I'm really not sure exactly how sleep paralysis works. 
I just know from my experience you're partially or fully paralyzed and some scary hallucinations can occur. Getting back to that nap I woke up from, on top of the paralysis I also hallucinated a woman screaming and moving violently to escape from the inside of my mattress from underneath me exactly where I was sleeping. I would remove mental decline. I see what a lot of people put here like depression, dementia, anxiety, people causing others harm, act. I have severe depression and a lot of underlying issues that are both from it and cause it. My mind is disintegrating slowly. I'm 15 and I have a worse memory than my drug aunt who's in her 40s. I can deal with the physical aspects but losing my ability to control my emotions to any capacity is really hard. I don't have friends anymore. I scared them all off. I can't sleep, can think straight, nothing really. I'm just empty most of the time. Point is I wish no one had to watch themselves drift away because of mental decline due to any issue. Be it a physical or chemical thing. What the fuck, this literally appeared after I told to my boyfriend that if I had a chance to press a button and disappear immediately with everyone not knowing that I even existed, I would probably press it. So well, after thinking of what to delete from this world and understanding that it is quite impossible to delete one thing that would solve every problem of the world, I think that my answer to this question would simply be, myself. Religion. I understand it has offered countless people peace of mind a moral compass, a sense of community, and many other benefits. But in my mind religion, regardless of which you choose cause let's face it, you and your congregates are the only ones who think you're in the right religion, the amount of time, money, and blood spent and wasted in the name of religion far exceeds any good it has done. Religion is responsible for many of local culture as well, so it is not as if the religion is something confined and separate in society. It is not hard to see how religion is absolutely everywhere, regardless of region. Religion was created with good intentions I'm sure. To explain the unexplainable, to control the otherwise lawless masses. But we've gotten too far from its good intentions and now we just are happy to ignore each other and accept the suffering of entire people all because some people don't like another people's religion. Cancer. I had leukemia when I was 3 and luckily beat it. But the chemo didn't fuck me up physically but mentally. I have ADHD, depression, anxiety, and some PTSD, paranoia of health. Worst part is that I didn't find this out until I was 20 when I came across a research paper discussing the long-term effects of chemotherapy on mental health. Edit, if you fought cancer, please please stay on top of the long-term effects. Especially if you think something is off. Plastic for fuck's sakes. It has been found in the placentas of newborns. The factory workers who make plastics are exposed to carcinogens not to mention the people who live near them. The list goes on and on but it is everywhere and in everything including way too much in the oceans. The amount of destruction and death caused by plastic will never be fully understood. I do understand that it has benefits but on the whole, the world would be better off with no plastic. Gotta love the morons who just say religion and move on thinking they added something to the conversation. It's gonna be real awkward standing before God saying shit this stupid on Reddit. Don't get me wrong, people have to use religion for selfish and unjustifiable reasons. But even the best things in life are tainted by mankind. Real religion helps people and allows you to have a relationship with your creator. Imagine being mad at that. If I had power to delete anything. Let's think about it. If I remove X thing, it is caused by Y thing and X causes other things N. M example, NXM let's say that we don't like X cause creates N but M is okay. And we try to remove N instead of X. Let's say that N is suffering what if you remove suffering from the world, a B N. Let's say A is getting hit by a car. And B is the brain chemical reaction that indicate what is good and bad for you. Thanks to that you know that you should not put your hand on fire because it hurts. People learn easily trough painful experiences. Thanks to that people are not eaten by predators too much before hundreds thousands of years of evolution to cause or extinction. Without suffering seems good. But. If we remove it you will not be here reading this post. That's one of the simples example of why we should not remove anything. Edit, bruh, now I want to remove the bad text transition on Reddit.